All right, hi, Meg Gadget. This is Shiv Uh I'm here with uh, the surgical theater team. We have Dr. Selman, Modi, the president, and we have Dr. Sloan. And they're going to show us a very cool surgical theater application right now. So, take it through. And maybe one of you can describe it while we're seeing the demo. Sure. So this is an aneurysm case. So there are a lot of uh, simulators that you can purchase fairly inexpensively that allow you to perhaps do a, a simple operation, put a shunt, put a ventricular catheter in, maybe even clip an aneurysm, but it's, it's a generic program. It's the same every time. So you do it once, you do it twice, you have it. The, the thing that makes this real is that it's, it's not a generic patient, it's tomorrow's patient. So we're actually going to rehearse not just the type of case we're going to do the next day, but the exact same uh, image, using the images from the, from the patient that we're actually going to operate the next day. And you can actually see, I don't know if you can pick it up on your uh, eye camera, but you can actually see pulsations in the vessels. And so you can see you know, the various structures, the, 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 the windows, the optic nerve, you can see the, the, the vessels, the branches, and you can actually manipulate the images. Once he's applied the clip, you can actually turn around and make sure that he's gotten, not only obliterated the aneurysm, but look and see what's going on with the perforators and make sure that we've, we've not gotten the perforators and if you do then maybe you can take a different approach or try a different clip or change your angle a little bit uh, and that's not something you you can do using conventional technology it, it 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 can a make surgery faster safer and better and b think about how do we train the next generation of surgeons um you know warren and i trained you know in the you know well what we call the old school method. You know, we, we, we were residents for seven years. There was no time limit. We were there every day, 120 hours a week, perhaps, and, you know, practicing our craft. Today, we have to teach residents to do this in 80 hours a week, a third less time than we have. And by the way, they have twice as many operations to learn. So how, how are we going to get that next generation educated I think this is part of the answer. I think so as well. This looks fantastic. And just, would you mind, uh, Dr. Sullivan or Mori, commenting on what is the phantom omni system you're using to actually manipulate? Like, or what would you yes, so, so actually, we were guided by Dr. Ron Selman. He wanted the, the devices to be as uh, immersive as, as we can. He really wanted to close his eyes and, and can't really tell the difference between being in the OR or the surgery itself or uh, doing uh, the operation here. So we chose the sensible only because they provide, on one hand, some haptic feedback back to the hand so you can feel the vessel. And on the other hand, it's feel intuitive. So when more someone operates, uh, one coin with the, the, the muscle wheel, so I do it once, twice, you know exactly what the maneuver I want to, I want to do. So um, we really invested a lot of time and effort to choose the, the perfect match for the interface for the surgeon to work with the system. Yes, a lot of this was designed on the same idea as a fighter pilot who would never go out and do a sortie without knowing exactly where they're going to be flying and what to expect. And it's the same idea here. And Modi would say when they designed the F-16 fighter pilot simulator, and you probably know you're a, a pilot, you want the simulator to be so realistic that the pilot actually sweats. They feel they're really immersed in the whole scenario. If you don't practice in that way, you won't gain the experience. And so the surgical simulator is designed in the same way. We want to make the surgeon sweat. We want to make them feel totally immersed because, as Matthew Sayad said in his book, Bounds, it's really purposeful practice that separates the best from the rest. So you can't just go out and randomly practice. You have to practice in a very realistic environment. And this, I think, will do that. As Andy said, you know, surgical training hasn't, trained, hasn't changed for really over 100 years. It's really based on a pulse system. And that worked when we had high volumes and residents were residents. My father was a resident during that time. And you know why they call them residents? Because they lived in the hospital. <laughs> so there you can have a chance to do that. Now we don't do that. So you really have to find a new way to train, or to train the next generation. Because if we don't do that, all our knowledge will be lost. Right. Well, it's a privilege seeing this. And I, as a medical student and as a reporter, I can't wait to see this actually in my medical school. And, and, hopefully in a hospital soon. Well, great, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you,